Hi everybody, my name is Boski Savla and I'm a technical marketing manager working on modern applications at VMware. Today I'm going to talk about how VMware is helping simplify the Kubernetes user experience based on Tanzu application service for Kubernetes. Now, if you think about um, you know, a life a little bit, go back in history and think about how applications uh, were built and deployed uh, before Kubernetes came along, uh, essentially, uh, you'll see a degree or variation of something like this, right? There's a development team that is uh, working on creating that application, coding it, etc. And then there's a team that is actually trying to figure out how to push that application to a given infrastructure. Now, sometimes these processes could be very manual, wherein you know every step is manual, and you're um, trying to um, somebody's actually physically sitting there, clicking virtual machines, deploying, integrating with load balancers, and things like that. And at times, uh, we also start seeing organization do this with some configuration uh, management tools, like maybe Chef, you know, writing Chef recipes or Puppet manifest files or Ansible, etc. Um, now, with a completely automated system where, you know, a configuration management system is going to automate the deployment and the maintenance of that application, uh, even while doing so, you know, apart from writing the application code itself, a team now has to start deploying uh, or working on coding this configuration management tool. And a lot of times these config management tools have a one-on-one -on -one mapping to a particular infrastructure. So uh, if you write a chef recipe for AWS, it may not work on Azure or vice versa, or it may not work on vSphere. And hence, like, you'll have to, you know, portability also is not that, you know, uh, easy. Plus developers don't necessarily see where their application is being pushed. It's always this, this, this manual wall where things have to be pushed to uh, a particular team to get it done. I think Kubernetes changed a lot of this paradigm uh, by, you know, abstracting away infrastructure. We all know that, you know, Kubernetes does this very well. Now, Kubernetes is abstracting away infrastructure, so it's making things a lot more simpler. So rather than having to talk to every infrastructure provider, that you may have, for example, talking to AWS, talking to vSphere, talking to Google Cloud, Azure, you just now, you now just talk to the Kubernetes API and then the Kubernetes API is going to handle a lot of the uh, workload creation and deployment workloads on that particular infrastructure. So this simplified a lot of things uh, in terms of how applications get uh, deployed and maintained. Now, another thing that Kubernetes is doing pretty good is, um, it is a lot more application aware than a lot of these tools and systems. So for example, you know, every application has specific needs, like every application or a workload needs to be deployed, it needs to be scalable, it needs to have load balancing, it needs to have ingress, it needs to have a way to, uh, you know, manage uh, configuration elements at runtime, etc. And so Kubernetes, if you think about it, has a resource object defined for each of these app of this particular application needs. So it has pods, deployments, replica sets, services, ingress, etc., to take care of that particular application. And this is where the power comes in, right? Where the wall is broken and application teams are now the development teams themselves can define very simply uh, what the end state of that workload needs to be and push it to a Kubernetes API and the API or the Kubernetes cluster in the back end works with your infrastructure provider to make all of this magic happen. And I, th I feel like this is really the crux of why Kubernetes is so popular, the way it works for developers and the, the way it really abstracts infrastructure. Now let's take a look at what that developer experience feels like, for example, to deploy a, a simple two-tier or three-tier application which has a need to deploy a persistent storage and hence some runtime configurations to manage. Now typically I would, you know, as a developer, um, you know, one would start building or writing that code. They would then create a Docker file and containerize it, build a container, push it into a registry. And then finally, one, before pushing it to uh, Kubernetes or giving it to Kubernetes, uh, the team will have to define what kind of Kubernetes objects are needed um, to run that particular application. So some of the common objects would be, you know, you need a deployment type, maybe you need a replica set, maybe you need a service. 
So these are some of the common elements that you need to be created. But then if you're talking to a database server, for example, then you'll need to define, you know, a way to talk to the database server. So you'll probably end up using secrets or config maps to do so. So uh, the dev team then has to define uh, a lot of these uh, manifest files that are needed uh, for that application to effectively run. And that is just for the, you know, a single tier of that app. Similarly, for every other service or, for example, a persistent storage that the application needs, you'll have to go ahead and do the same. You'll have to define secrets, you'll have to define deployment, persistent, um, you know, volume, uh, etc. And all of this for a two-tier app may feel like um, a little bit of an overhead in terms of your overall development life cycle. And we definitely feel that we can make this process a lot more efficient. I mean, Kubernetes is already making things so simple for you know, dev teams where they don't have to think about, uh, you know, what is an AWS load balancer versus what is a vSphere load balancer, etc. But then we feel like there is a scope to, you know, redefine the experience of even uh, talking to the Kubernetes API. And that is where um, you know we are working to create uh, this new integration where we understand that Cloud Foundry, which is a PaaS uh, or platform as a service, is very popular um, with development teams because of the simple user experience that it gives developers. As in, you can simply write your code, do a CF push, and then Cloud Foundry completely takes over and maintains your application for you without you having to you know, understand much and how it's done. So um, what we are doing is we are taking elements or what we thought we'll do is Kubernetes has so much to offer and the developer experience of Cloud Foundry is amazing and people love that experience. Why don't we integrate the two together to make this uh, even more rock solid of a solution? And that's what we did with Tansu Application Service for Kubernetes. What Tansu Application Service for Kubernetes does is it gives you that familiar CF push experience at the same time the abstraction and the capabilities that Kubernetes brings. Um, essentially what we are doing is we are um, basically integrating or uh, re-architecting Cloud Foundry runtime components to be running as pods and containers within Kubernetes. And I'm not going to get into the architecture a lot because it's um, a very in-depth, it, it might take an hour, but let's say you do a push, a CF push of an application um, workload, uh, you know, with one that you have already coded. Once you do a CF push, what effectively happens is the CF runtime components that are running on that cluster, for example, the build service in particularly, are going, is going to, you know, take all the files needed for that application workload, create a Docker file, run a Docker build on that um, and create an image. And it will then push that image to a registry of your choice, a container registry. Once it has done that, it will start uh, you know, talking to the Kubernetes API to deploy that application into a deployment and pods. And then finally, it will also create services and ingress uh, for that specific application. So effectively, a single CF push command in turn is going to talk to Kubernetes and do multiple different tasks that our dev team would have done anyways. Let's take a quick demo of how this works. So here's my Kubernetes cluster. I'm running this on Tansu Kubernetes Grid. And uh, this Kubernetes cluster also has the Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes components pre-installed. So if you look at the namespaces, it will have like the build service, some of the namespaces that are you know, needed for Cloud Foundry to operate on Kubernetes. And you'll see some uh, components like, you'll see this Cappy API server, the KPAC, uh, the build service, et cetera, running. These pods in, uh, that are running on uh, the Kubernetes cluster are essentially going to help us deploy uh, an app so uh, the Cloud Foundry runtime is essentially running as an application within this Kubernetes cluster. Now let's let, take a look at uh, a specific namespace called CF Workloads. Now within the CF Workloads, uh, you'll see that 
this is where a lot of the applications uh, that we'll be pushing into this cluster will get deployed. We also have Istio running on this cluster, which will help, uh, you know, which Cloud Foundry uses to build ingress routes. So let's jump in and uh, start deploying uh, an application and see what the experience looks like. So I have a very simple Go-based uh, application that's just going to show me the index at, at a given point in time. And I'm already logged in to Cloud Foundry that is running on the Kubernetes cluster over here. So as you can see, if I do my list of applications, there are no apps currently running. And my goal is to push this uh, Go-based application into Cloud Foundry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just getting going to get into um, that directory where my application sits. So it's called I'm calling it a test app. Here are all the files for that application. And I'm just simply going to do a CF push. And I'm going to give it a specific application name or an ingress route. So I'm going to call it test app. So in the back end, if, you, if we go back to the um, cluster, you'll start seeing that uh, the CF workload staging area starts to, you know, starts building up. It will, you'll start seeing some workloads getting created over here. And the build service is going to basically take the application files, push them in a Docker file, and upload it to my registry. In my case, I'm going to use Docker Hub as my system registry, and you'll, you know, you know, in a bit, you'll start to see that uh, on my Docker Hub, um, you know, this new um, container image will be published. So it takes a little, um, maybe a minute or two to finish this setup. Okay, so let's take a look at the applications. You'll see that the test tab has been pushed into the cluster. Uh, let's take a look at the cluster itself. So uh, if I go to my namespaces, um, if I go to CF workloads, You'll see the test app pod getting created. You'll also see some of the stateful sets needed for that application to run. You'll also see the services that were built as part of that application and an ingress and a network policy. All of this happened without us telling Kubernetes what to do. It created the defaults needed to effectively run this application on the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if I go back to my Docker Hub and just refresh this page, you'll see that this particular image that I just, uh, you know, uh, the, the Cloud Foundry running on that Kubernetes cluster actually pushed this image into my Docker Hub two minutes ago without me having to build any Docker files or create any, um, you know, or build any images. All of this was automated within uh, the Cloud Foundry um, instance. Let's take a look at the application itself. So you'll see this is a simple app that's running um, uh, with, an with an ingress route running on that particular cluster. So this is um, a very simple example of how a CF push is going to help us build all these different Kubernetes components needed to effectively run that application. Uh, apart from just you know pushing application, running the uh, container images, building it, uh, deploying services, etc., Cloud Foundry is also going to help us manage logging systems. So if I need to see the logs for that particular pod or container, I simply do CF logs for my app, and uh, we are going to start seeing um, the pod logs running in our terminal. Similarly, scaling that application is also pretty simple. I can simply say CF scale um, and my instance count is going to be two. Sorry, I forgot to give it the name of the app. And if we go back to our, uh, what this is going to do is basically create another pod for that particular, it's going to pull the image from my Docker Hub and create a new pod. 
So if we go back to workloads, um, you'll now see that there are two pods running because we just scaled it using CF scale. So this is uh, just a few examples how utilizing the CF push um, or the CF API, we are essentially wrapping multiple Kubernetes APIs behind a single CF API to run our application and effectively simplifying the developer experience. Thank you.